Warning, this program may contain visuals that might offend sensitive viewers. Parental guidance is advised. Does racial profiling still exist in South Africa? Cutting Edge takes a look at two cases where customers say they were ill-treated because of the color of their skin. He said to me, um, he saw me steal this and put it in my bag. She patted me down, and while she was patting me down, my partner said I was with Tina the whole time, so why aren't you searching me? He looked at my partner and said, we don't need to search you. So when they took us from the shop, they decided to handcuff us. They decided to handcuff us, and they paraded us through the mall. Your this game, your this game that you like. Five hours later, and I'm still seated here being accused of stealing a lip gloss worth of 16 grams. 29-year-old Masilelo Nyati says she was interrogated and humiliated for almost eight hours after being falsely accused of stealing. On the 26th of October, 2021, Masilelo and her friend went to a discam store at a mall in Johannesburg. She says she was a regular at the store where she tinted her eyebrows every month. However, on this fateful day, when she and her friend left the store, they were accosted by a security guard at the parking lot. He accused Marcelello of stealing a lip gloss and sent her and her friend back to the store to be searched. When we got by the counters, um, he said, I must, take it. I must take out everything in my bag he wants to search, to see what's there. That's how I emptied my bag on the counter. Immediately after I emptied my bag on the counter, he picked up my my lip gloss, this particular one. He said to me, um, he saw me steal this and put it in my bag, okay? Why did you see me on the CCTV footage? Um, I then said to him, okay, can you please allow me to see the footage? Maybe I can retrace my steps and tell you what I was doing. Because if it's this, you are saying that I stole, you can clearly see this is used and I bought it and steal it. He refused and said, they don't have to do that. It's their personal property. And at this point, they don't have to prove anything to me. Fortunately, Masilelo kept her old receipts. In a desperate attempt to prove her innocence, she phoned her mother. And by a stroke of luck, her mother found the receipt from the previous month. She was relieved because it clearly showed the barcode of her daughter's previous lip gloss purchase. She sent her a picture. Here's a receipt. They refused to see it. What, why did they refuse to see it? What did they say? Why? They said they know these kind of people. Uh, okay, the statement was, we know you kind of people. For all we know, this could have been forged. And then my statement was, okay, okay, fine. I hear you on the point, it could have been forged. Can we take my discount card? Here's the, the receipt on the phone. Compare the receipt numbers. You should be able to get a printout. Sometimes if you lose something, or maybe you buy something and then two months later you say you don't want it, they go to that same discount card and they print out the receipt. Why couldn't they do it this time? When Masilelo's mother arrived at the store with the receipt, hoping it would vindicate her daughter, she was given the cold shoulder. Because I don't want to get sleep. Masilelo says after being detained for five hours, she was then moved to the mall's holding cells as the store would be closing in an hour. We are arrested in handcuffs for stealing a lip gloss that I've had, that I've got a receipt. 
the new South Africa. This is your your your, your disc game, South Africa. Your disc game. Your disc game that you like. So when they took us from the shop, they decided to handcuff us. They decided to handcuff us, and they paraded us through the mall. There were people were looking at us like common thieves. Mind you, all this for 17 grand back. Pure handcuffs. Zaman Tungwa Mbeki, the acting provincial manager at the South African Human Rights Commission, says Maselelo's rights were violated. If a person is entering into a particular building, for instance, they do also have some, some rights within that institution. You can't be detained for a long time. It has to be a reasonable time, for instance, while they're just going through your bag and then they're supposed to release you if on face value there's actually nothing that they're detaining you for because in essence these are not the police. So they can't, they don't, they're not mandated or um, have the same powers as the police. And you'll understand that rights of detained persons in the constitution are also protect, uh, are protected, but it's only specific people who can detain you. Um, under those conditions. She says seven hours after being detained, the police had not been called. She realized she would be spending the night in the mall's holding cells. After seven, we started calling the police because we felt like um, the law says security officers do not have the right to arrest. They detain and they call the police. Now, out of everything... So they did not call the police? No one. We are the ones that call the police. They did not bother calling the police. I don't know what was the end game. But no police were called until we started calling the police. When the police arrived, she says they could not find evidence of the theft and let her go. They asked for the statement in the arresting officer. The arresting officer was not there. The, the officer tried to call him uh, and ask what is happening and what was the story. This is around 8 o'clock to 8. Then uh, they said, okay, come back. You can't be arresting people, and then when we come, you have not yet to do a handover. And he says, they see their failure. The police then said, but there's no case. How can someone steal something that she has a clear receipt of? That's how the police allowed us to go. The next day, on the 27th of October, Masalelo opened a criminal case against Diskem. She also went to the store's head office and spoke to the head of security. On the 28th, when Mr. Benjamin called me and apologized. Well, they were apologizing then, but this apology was different because it came with the feedback that I needed. But I apologize, our tea, the guy made a mistake. Uh, his words exactly, in like, one in at Bonnie's poke, in a lot. The footage clearly shows me taking something and pulling it down. And then walking out. From there, well, since the 26th, I was not okay, but that, that hit differently. That mm. sent, that sent chills down my spine because I couldn't understand why I had gone through what I had gone. The trauma and humiliation that she suffered was too much for Marcelero. The experience took a toll on her health. She sought medical help and says she was diagnosed with severe anxiety and stress and was further referred to a psychologist. That time I'm not sleeping, I'm not eating. I'm just, that's how I set up an appointment. The appointment was for the 30th of October. In the morning, when I was supposed to go to the appointment, when I woke up, I couldn't get out of bed. My right side was um, paralyzed. Masalelo was rushed to the hospital where she was told that she'd suffered a stroke. She says she stayed in the hospital for almost three months. Her mother says all of this could have been avoided. This came on now, Yagana. I got one of our spundilla right. Kabakala or Ninkabil or Kibat Pabahon, no one because Batsibishi or Mutus Petlel after exceeded after Tabelago. Carulo, we are about three days. If, as she says, it is indeed the trauma she suffered from the incident that caused her stroke, what recourse does she have? It would have to be a very clear line that it was particularly this incident that 
led to me having this particular stroke. And that is why you would then have to approach an attorney who would be able in the court papers to articulate and draw the line with evidence maybe from a doctor and all of those other things. And then you would be able to bring a court to a, a case to the court to say that actually because of a, a incident one, two, three, I suffered the following damages. And then the court would be able to apportion those. Diskem's website says they are a leading pharmacy group in South Africa and that their pharmacy-first approach means their customers can always depend on them to serve their pharmaceutical needs whenever they enter a Diskem store. However, Tina Redman says her visit to a Diskem store on the 4th of March this year was far from customer-friendly. She went there with her partner to get medication for her partner's grandmother who had just come out of surgery. We got everything, we paid for it, and we were leaving Diskem. But the security personnel at the entrance of the Diskem store stopped me and said, um, can you just wait for a second? Someone wants to speak to you. In my mind, I thought maybe someone wanted to take a picture because what happens usually is, because uh, I'm an actor, people want to take pictures and maybe staff is still working. and. But because we were in such a rush, um, I just said to him, listen, we have to get somewhere urgently and like our grandmother needs this medication. And he said, no, just hold on a second. And I'd actually never met anyone who was this aggressive uh, to take a photo, so it was a bit concerning. What she thought was just a crazed fan quickly escalated into a nightmare. I turned around and this man comes towards me holding an empty box and he says, I saw you take out a pair of eyelashes and chuck the box in the aisle. So I, I don't remember what he said after that, but I thought that was a joke. And so I didn't take it seriously, tried to turn around and he said, please come with me. At this point, um, I can see like security per personnel like surrounding me and a manager that's standing with his hands behind his back slowly pacing up and down watching what's happening. I looked to him kind of for help because I was like, I don't know what's going on. And now I'm being forced to go to the back, down the aisle in front of people who are shopping. And before I know it, I'm crying. Tina says the security officer said he had witnessed her removing the eyelashes from the box and putting them in her bag. She patted me down. And while she was patting me down, my partner said, I was with Tina the whole time, so why aren't you searching me? He looked at my partner and said, we don't need to search you. Tina's partner is a white woman. It was at that point they both suspected she was being racially profiled. This is a predominantly white area. And like when we were thinking back, I was the only black person in the store at the time. So we were thinking this has to be racial profiling. There's absolutely no way. So we tell him, you are racially profiling me. The search through her bag revealed nothing. Even after that, she says the security officer refused to retract his statement and insisted she had misplaced them. I said, sir, there's absolutely no way. Now I, I'm, I'm getting hot, I am getting angry. I'm like, I need to speak to someone else, someone who's more objective because you you completely believe that I've taken these eyelashes. So then my partner said, we can no longer speak to you. We need to speak to a manager. This is unacceptable. The assistant manager had accompanied the security personnel to detain Tina and had followed the commercial to the back room. When they arrived in his office, Tina says he would not listen to her and only addressed her partner. When I arrive, I am in total shock, I'm still shaking. And at this point, I'm not even accusing anyone, I'm just asking for help because a violent act just happened that shouldn't have happened. He did not want to speak to me. I needed to collect myself, so in that moment, I just needed to call my mom, and then my partner carried on speaking to him. My partner said, we need to see the CCTV footage. He said, the uh, disc cam is not authorized uh, uh, to give you the footage, it's against our policy, he kept saying. 
he still uh, refused to give us his surname so that we could um, escalate the situation because he was at completely not helpful. After the commotion, Tina and her partner simply walked out of the store. And we got to the car and my partner just said, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And then we just started crying together and we were, we were crying together for like, I don't know, felt like a very long time because we just didn't know what to do and we'd realized what just had happened. Following their humiliation and harassment, Tina and her partner shared their experience on social media. They also sent an email to the Dischem head office. In the morning, this tweet had, had gained a lot of traction. A lot of people were now speaking about their experiences. It was shocking to find out that I wasn't the only one and that there were so many more people whom are all black as well. So that was quite alarming. After the social media post went viral, Diskem reached out to Tina. And then um, Diskem stopped tweeting on their page and then came to mine and was saying, you know, um, we'd like to speak to you, please give us your contact details, so on and so forth. Um, that same day, this was the following day after the incident, I get a call from Jared, this assistant store manager, who is now very apologetic saying, you know, from the bottom of my heart, things like that, we're so sorry, this shouldn't have happened, whatever. It was very, I could not accept that apology, firstly because you, he refused to speak to me that day, refused to help me, refused to help me get a superior's email address, or even just the basic care line. Tina lodged a complaint against Diskem with the South African Human Rights Commission. When the complaint was submitted to the commission, um, at first, when you read the complaint, it was quite shocking, the way that she described what happened to her. And as a result, um, we consulted with her and then we had to get further input from her on um, the details of exactly what transpired on the day. What she sought was an apology for what happened. She was not looking for any form of um, um, retribution or something like that. She was quite upset about what happened and she wanted an apology and she wanted the security company, she wanted Discam to actually acknowledge that her rights had been violated and they'd been violated in the way that she had said. So she, she sought that validation initially because at the time she was not getting any response from anybody. Just over a week after the incident, Tina received a written apology from Discam. She says she's still struggling to come to terms with the incident. Another person who also had a similar experience reached out to me and said, you know, they told me what their experience was and they said, this is what you're gonna to have to do in the next week. You have to eat, you have to take care of yourself because it really does hurt. And I understood that because I wasn't eating. <laughs> Sorry. I wasn't eating for a couple of days and I knew that like they are taking so much of my time and I like in a week I have to work, I have to go to auditions, I have to show up. You cannot take this away from me and they make it so difficult. Um, but I've had so much support from my family, so much support from my partner and yeah, I'm just, I've also decided like my mom and I said that look, I'm going to have like just some basic counseling, talk about it, let it, I cannot carry this situation with me. Um, I just want it to be over. I just want them to take accountability. Um, it hurts even more when I read about other people's experiences. It's absolutely ridiculous and disgusting how they deal with these situations. If somebody finds themselves in a similar situation, um, I would say, firstly, um, be aware of what is being said to you, what, whether you are being charged or whatever the allegation that is put to you. Remain calm. Um, and then once that incident is done, get as many details as you can. The people who were involved, um, as she did, the manager at the time, so that when you do lodge a complaint with any other institution, whether it be the South African Human Rights Commission, CRL Commission, the police or whoever, you've got all of the details that you need in order to bring that, com um, that um, 
that case or that complaint so that when the investigation actually kicks off, the person investigating has got all of the details. Discam responded to Tina and Marcelelo's allegations in a written statement. Following the completion of an in-depth investigation, Discam unreservedly apologized to Tina Redman for her unfortunate experience after a recent incident at one of its stores and formally acknowledged that she was without blame. Discam will not be commenting on the complaint from Marcelelo Nyati as there is a legal case pending. Discam does not racially profile its customers and firmly condemns any allegations or accusations of such conduct. Discam continues to focus on its internal training systems and policies to ensure fairness and courtesy across all customer interactions. This is the guy who says he's got nothing to explain and he's being arrested for stealing something worth of 1600, 16 rands. No. Masalelo says the security personnel that accused and detained her was let go, but the two white managers are still working at the store. The following day, that guy was let go or whatever. They're saying that he resigned, but that's, that's when the guy stopped working. Whether he stopped working or they transferred him, it's unknown. But the two managers are there, like nothing happened. That are telling me Oguti, oh, um, the security company, is the one that is responsible and just came I gain and out because when they appointed an external um, security company. Remember Bibana Salama while I was being violated, mm -hmm. they were actively taking part. They were actively taking part, they were even interrogating me. There is a general concern that when it comes to customer service, black customers are not treated the same as customers of other races. People who have been subjected to what they call consumer racial profiling have described the experience as embarrassing, insulting, hurtful, frightening, and a violation of their right to dignity.